This is the Registered Behavior Technician course presented by Shaza Tar. The course content was created by Shaza Tar and is the property of Autism Therapy and Training, Inc. All rights are reserved. This training program is based on the Behavior Analyst Certification Board 2018 RBT Task List 2nd Edition and is designed to meet the 40-hour training requirement for the RBT credential. The program is offered independent of the BACB. Remember, in each class, we will have our active listening, a quiz, and a competency assessment. Welcome everyone to Autism Therapy and Training. I'm excited to have you embark on this education journey with me. For many years, I've been working in the field of applied behavior analysis and working specifically with young children diagnosed with autism, ADHD, and other communicative and behavioral challenges. I'm delighted to share my experiences with you to help support your work, whether you're a teacher, therapist, or parent. I want to get started, but before I do, I want to give you an introduction to who I am and what to expect from each class. I want to talk about the BACB and the RBT credentials, so you really have an understanding of what the process is all about. Each class will start with the objective uh, based on the RBT task list or topic in which I will be reviewing. I may not go in the order of the task list. I base my talk in an order I think would help you prepare for the field. So for example, today I will start with F1 on our task list. It's one I like to start with because it talks about the requirements of the RBT credential. I want those enrolling in the RBT to have an understanding of the expectations and things they need to do before they complete the 40 hours of training. Many will often start the training but not have a clear idea of what is required of them, so I'd like to clarify this as soon as possible. In today's topic, I'll describe the BACB's RBT supervision requirements and the RBT role in the service delivery system. I'll be your course instructor for the next 40 hours. My name is Shaz Attar, the founder of Autism Therapy and Training, and I'm a board certified behavior analyst. When people ask me how I got started in the field, it's not like most people. Like most university students, I needed a job and I managed to land myself a position in a daycare uh, center many years ago. I was majoring in linguistics and psychology um, at the time and I thought one day I'd become a speech pathologist. But I believe we don't choose our careers, often our careers choose us. My pivotal moment began with a little boy. I met him at this daycare. Multiple teachers had quit on him, and the staff had labeled him as too difficult. When I walked into the room for the first time, and I couldn't find him, they directed me to the rug in the corner, his favorite spot. This little guy didn't join circle time. He tantrumed if he didn't get his way, and a diaper change seemed almost impossible. He didn't communicate uh, in any meaningful way. It was compassion that drove me to research and read so that I could teach myself ways to engage him, play with him, and include him in that social setting. The idea of a young child being isolated and alone was heartbreaking, and I knew there must be a way. Keep in mind, I had no previous experience with autism or any training in applied behavior analysis. I was purely working out of passion and compassion and an insatiable appetite to make a difference in this little boy's life. There were no lifelong plans or dreams. It was only about him and that moment. Day after day, I would slowly engage him and pull out his favorite toys and get him to come out of that rug. Um, I built the trust that I needed to start teaching him. I introduced him to sign language and made his world a little easier a little less demanding, and a lot more fun. Within just a few months, he began talking and participating in group activities. It was then that I knew that teaching children who were unique and learned differently was the role that I was meant to fulfill. I pursued a master's in disability studies and worked towards achieving my BCBA. I founded Autism Therapy and Training in 2010 and opened the first center in Woodbridge, Ontario in 2011. 
For a decade now, my heart has been driven to train others, giving them the tools that have helped me succeed in my career. Years of seeing children changed before my eyes. I believed in the work I did, in the science, in ABA. And I wanted everyone to get that knowledge and get it right. I spend a great deal of time reading and researching so that I can be better to do better for the young children I oversee and for the teams that I coach. In 2015, I launched our first RBT training program. It was an exciting time to see so many future RBTs taking the course and learning all about ABA. And with the second edition task list, I'm even more excited to present our new and revised RBT training. So what's different about this training from the previous one? Firstly, this training covers the items on the second edition task list as required by the BACB. Secondly, topics are shortened to about an hour for each class, giving you an opportunity to take in each class and absorb the material. Another exciting change, well, maybe more exciting for me, I've added a different component to active listening, which is adding my favorite Scrabble words. So let me tell you, I'm an avid Scrabble player. I love it, and I love most when I use words that no one else knows. It's fun because I surprise everyone with these words, and what you'll need to do is listen carefully during these classes and write them down. When you hear them, and I say the words, I'll spell them out for you. All you need to do is jot it down. It's just for fun. Another newly added part to the training course is the competency assessment component. When you complete the RBT training, a BCBA or BCABA supervisor will conduct the competency assessment with you. But I find many get really nervous about the assessment, so by adding it in, it will better prepare you for that assessment. And finally, at the end of the course, you'll have a quiz that will test your understanding of that topic. These questions will also prepare you for the final RBT exam. After taking this RBT training course, I want you to walk away feeling confident, and that's why I've added as many assessments and test components as possible. I encourage you to listen to each class and have fun with it. So let's get started and dive right into it. Now I want you to remember, yes, this is an online course, but feel free to send me an email and I will personally respond back, whether it's feedback or a question. I'm here to help you out. It can get quite confusing when you hear lots of abbreviated words when you hear someone talking about the BACB or BCBA or BCABA and so on. So let's unpack this and let's get into and let's get to know what all this means. So who is the BACB? The BACB is the Behavior Analyst Certification Board, a nonprofit organization that was established in 1998 and they have been a big player in enhancing our field and improving quality of treatment for individuals with disabilities, ensuring that practitioners are engaging in ethical and professional conduct. Like many professional fields, there is a college or board that is responsible for professionals working in that field. So in our field, the BACB is responsible for those that use behavior analytic methods. It provides the professional credentials needed for practicing behavior analysts and behavior technicians. It is the board that oversees all the certified professionals working in behavior analysis. Should a certified behavior analyst or technician act unethically, the BACB would investigate this. The BACB ensures that certified professionals in our field maintain their credential by taking continuing education courses and so on. The BACB has four levels of credentials. Here you can see the different levels and levels of education required for each. In this case, as someone working towards the registered behavior technician credential, you need a minimum of a high school diploma. This is the credential you are currently working towards. The RBT must work under the supervision of the behavior analyst. An RBT cannot work independently. This is based on the BACB's requirements. The next credential is the BCABA, which is the Board Certified Assistant Behavior Analyst. This is an individual who has an undergraduate level of education. They must be supervised by a behavior analyst at the BCBA or BCBA-D level. 
the BCABA cannot work independently. The assistant behavior analyst can supervise RBTs. So you may have a supervisor that is a BCABA, but even they need to be supervised 5% of the time. A BCBA is a board certified behavior analyst with a graduate level of education that can work independently. Similarly, a BCBAD can work independently, but the difference is the BCBAD has a doctoral level training in behavior analysis. Your supervisor can be a BCBAD, a BCBA, or a BCABA. So when you are looking to get a supervisor, any of those would be just fine. The role of the behavior analyst supervisor is to conduct assessments, analyze data, and develop treatment plans. The behavior analyst will oversee the implementation of these programs. Of course, not limited to these services, the behavior analyst is also responsible for many other tasks such as staff and parent training. The behavior analyst is required to maintain their credential by taking continuing education courses within their certification cycle. Your supervisor will be your go-to person. You want to learn from them, be guided by them, and ensure that you get along with them. So if you're looking for a supervisor, feel free to put questions together to ensure that you will get the best out of your supervision time with them. Once I get into the process of getting the RBT credential, we'll talk about some of, the, some of those questions. The contract with your supervisor, paid or unpaid supervisors, and so on. So hang tight. Before I get into your supervisor and that relationship, let's talk about who you are as an RBT. A registered behavior technician, as described by the BACB, is a paraprofessional that works under the supervision of a BCABA, BCBA, or BCBAD. As an RBT, you cannot work independently. You must have a supervisor. I'll explain the steps of preparing for the RBT in a few moments. The RBT is the frontline staff who is responsible for direct implementation of services. You will run skill acquisition programs, run behavioral protocols, take data, and other very important parts of the direct therapy. The RBT is a crucial part of the team. I truly believe they are the heart and soul of the intervention. A well-trained RBT can make a world of a difference. Now, of course, supervision is essential and a well-trained supervisor also impacts the overall treatment plan. But to actually execute the plan is the core of the improvement and success. As an RBT, you will not design programs or protocols or conduct assessments. It is important that each team member does their required tasks and works within their competency. As an RBT, you may not be conducting assessments, but you will definitely be helping out. We'll get to that when we talk about assessments. The BACB has requirements for those that are interested in the RBT credential. Firstly, you must be at least 18 years of age and have a high school diploma or something nationally equivalent to that. So if you're not sure about your education level, depending on where you are, be sure to contact the BACB to ensure that you meet the criteria before you actually enroll into a program. You'll need to complete a 40-hour training program that covers the RBT task list requirements. This must include at least three hours uh, on ethics and at least one hour on supervision. The 40 hours of training can be done online or in person. Choosing an RBT program is really a preference. Since most will be similar in content, the main difference is the instructor's experiences or examples they give. My examples are my years of experience as a frontline therapist. I spent over six years as a therapist, both in home-based environments and in a center-based. So I've experienced both worlds. The most important thing to note here is that the training needs to be completed within 180 days. So if you don't finish it in that time frame, the organization cannot give you an extension. I've had people that didn't finish on time. They email me and tell me about what has happened. Life events that happen, that occur, and I understand. But unfortunately, as a provider or instructor, I have to follow the rules of the BACB. And 180 days is the time that you have. So be sure when you are enrolling, you pace yourself, but ensure that you plan for any emergencies that may come up. 
You also cannot do it in less than five days either. So you have from five to 180 days to complete the 40 hours of training. You will need to complete a criminal background check before you submit your paperwork to the BACB. You can contact your local city or town to find out where that can be completed. Your supervisor will need to answer questions based on that when they complete the application process on their end. Once you have enrolled into a program, you want to start looking for a supervisor if you haven't already or if you don't have one in mind. If you have a BCBA in, uh, in your organization or school, you can also ask them to conduct your competency assessment and maybe to oversee you once you become certified. You may not be working in an organization with a BCBA, so this is when you need to start looking for someone. You can go to the BACB registry to find a local supervisor. You can contact them through the registry. You can put your zip code, state, province, or country and find someone. You may need to contact a few supervisors since many may not be taking on any new supervisees. Email them and let them know that you are an RBT in training looking for a supervisor to conduct the RBT competency assessment for you and um, or to also become your supervisor after you complete the training. This supervisor will need to supervise you 5% of the time per month based on the number of hours you do in behavioral services. This supervisor will most likely charge you for that time. So be sure to ask how much that is uh, to account for that and you can budget for that as well. When you complete the course and submit the paperwork to the BACB, they will ask you to name the supervisor and that's why it's really important to have that prepared in advance. You can schedule a meeting online or in person with the supervisor to ask them questions about who they are, how long they've been supervising RBTs or working in the field, what to expect from supervisions, how often will supervisions be. Remember, you need to have at least 5% uh, supervision time with them. I will get into the details shortly, but be sure that the supervisor is going to provide you with the appropriate supervision time one-to-one -one versus group. Um, if they're doing group supervision, um, is the rate different? You want to feel comfortable with your supervisor. You want to feel that they're approachable, um, that they will give you that time, whether you're paying them or not. So many RBTs or therapists I work with will often say to me, I feel bad to bother you or ask you questions because you're so busy. A supervisor will always be busy, but it's their job to be there for you, to answer your questions, to help you out. So don't feel bad. Once you've completed the online training, you will receive a certificate and a letter of completion stating that you have successfully completed the course. Now, you can schedule your competency assessment with the supervisor that you have in mind. The competency assessment is found online on the BACB website. I've also provided the link for you on our website. It shows all the areas in which the assessor will observe you doing in vivo. The competency assessment may take a few hours or be conducted over a few sessions. This all depends on your supervisor. You can ask them how that will be conducted so that you can prepare for it. As you can see, the supervisor may have you conduct these items with a client. They can role play it with you or some can be done in an interview format. Once that is completed and you have passed your competency assessment, you are now ready to submit your paperwork to the BACB. You will need to create an account through the BACB portal. You can visit the link below create a username and password, and start the RBT process. Remember, all this information is also on the BACB website under RBT. This slide here shows you the process in which you and the supervisor will need to take. You can review it to ensure that you have completed all the parts as well. Now, you will need to send the documents such as the certificate, letter of completion, the competency assessment, and the, the name of the responsible certificant who will be your supervisor uh, to the BACB. So if you don't have that person, you can't submit your paperwork. That's why it's crucial to have a supervisor ready to go. You will also need to pay the application fee. 
Once you have submitted your paperwork, the BACB will approve your application as long as all the items are sent correctly. If anything is missing, they will let you know. When you receive the email for the RBT exam, you can schedule it. The RBT exam uh, can be taken at the Pearson View Testing Centers, which are located in many different areas. You can visit their website to see the closest location to you. You will need to pay Pearson View the exam fee uh, before you sit for the exam. The exam consists of 75 scored questions and 10 questions which are not scored, but are pilot questions. You'll have an hour and a half to complete the exam. Here's a breakdown of the content areas and number of questions per section. Again, this information is on the BACB website for you, but I'd like to just share it with you so you feel comfortable about the information. Finally, before receiving the credential, you need to pass the RBT exam. Once you have, the BACB will email you and let you know. You will also be listed on the RBT registry. Here's a checklist for you. You can use this as your guide as you complete this process. Each time that you complete a part, check it off. Okay, we've talked lots about just the process of the RBT and submitting your paperwork and getting set up for that. Again, I find many people really worry about this part. So let's relax a little bit and do our first Scrabble word. From time to time, I may throw in a secret word or my favorite Marvel word. So watch out for those as well. My first Scrabble word is ba, spelled B-A. In ancient Egyptian mythology, this is known as a being soul or personality, represented as a human-headed bird. Interesting, huh? Okay, take a quick stretch and let's start talking about the basics of supervision and the role of the RBT. As an RBT, it's important to understand your role in the service delivery system, your expectations, and also what you should expect from your supervisor. As I mentioned earlier, an RBT cannot work independently. They require supervision by a behavior analyst. The requirement of supervision mandated by the BACB is a minimum of 5% a month of the time you spend providing behavior analytic services. Most often, as a new RBT, you may require more time with your supervisor, and I think that's okay. Even great. Remember, at the end of the day, we want to provide quality treatment so we can make a difference in our clients' lives. Your supervisor may be your employer or someone you hire to be your supervisor. You may be a teacher working in a school board and you don't have a BCBA that works in the school, so you'll need to make arrangements for a BCBA to supervise your work. It's important to determine costs, consent with the workplace, and client to ensure that the BCBA can oversee you. So as you are taking this RBT training, figure out how you will ensure that a supervisor can oversee you and, can, uh, and that you can get that consent from the workplace if needed. Speak to your company or the family that you're working with to get that all set up. So what should you expect from, the super, from supervisions? Your supervisor will develop performance expectations so that they can monitor your progress and develop your skills. At our center, I've created procedural checklists for many of the tasks um, that an RBT may do. These are broken down into steps helping a supervisee know what is expected of them. This way, we can help support the RBT in improving in different areas. Expect that your supervisor will observe you. Although being observed can be a little nerve wracking, at the end of the day, you'll be so grateful to have had that time with your supervisor. Remember, the observation is not about finding your mistakes and telling you about it, but think of it as getting feedback so that you can do better for your client. When your client is number one, then you'll do what it takes to ensure that they're receiving the best service. So your supervisor will observe you, train you, and provide you with feedback on your performance. You and your supervisor will work on problem solving and ethical decision making. Practice makes perfect, and if we don't learn it with our supervisors in a role play environment, we may not be able to actually engage in proper ethical choices and problem solving techniques when in need. You and your supervisor will review written programs and protocols. 
you can see that you and your supervisor will be spending lots of time together. It is a team effort to create an effective therapeutic environment for our clients. Okay, how about you stretch quickly? Let me throw in another word. This time it's a Marvel character. At the center, both the kids and staff love Marvel. Um, our film producer is the biggest Marvel fan and I'm so grateful to have her here. So I'm sure she will love this one. The character is Captain America. I'm not gonna spell that one for you. Just write it down, it's Captain America. Are you ready to get back into it? Okay. Supervisions should be structured as at least two face-to-face -face contacts per month. You want to sit down with your supervisor face-to-face, -face, whether it's using Skype or FaceTime or actually going to their office or them coming to you. But you need that face-to-face. -face. If your supervisor is only doing phone calls or emails, that's not sufficient. Your supervisor needs to actually observe you, and, and this should be at least once a month. Again, this could be a videotape or them coming on site, which means you need to have consent for, your, for that supervisor. If they work for the organization, then you're fine, but if they uh, don't, then you need to ensure that you are uh, being observed and that you have that consent. I can talk to a therapist about what is happening, but when I actually see it, I see something that they may not be seeing or attending to. The BACB really encourages observations as much as possible. So we know the value of observations. So we wanna ensure that we're getting that done. I mentioned before that your time with your supervisor can be in a group format as well, but only one of the two can be. So if your supervisor is doing all group and no individual, that's not acceptable. One must be one-on-one -on -one with your supervisor and yourself, and the other one can be done in a group. If group meetings are held, there should be no more than 10 RBTs in the session and non-RBT participations should be limited as much as possible. The BACB wants to ensure that you as the RBT are getting the required hours of training and supervision to enhance your skills. Taking supervision seriously is very important. If you skip supervisions or fail to attend them, it could result in immediate termination or an inability to get certified. RBTs can only practice with a supervisor, so just keep that in mind. Especially if your supervisor needs to terminate the supervision relationship for whatever reason, this should be stated in the contract. You want to ensure that your supervisor gives you enough time to secure another supervisor should they quit their job or if they are on a leave of absence. You and your supervisor must sign a contract which outlines the details of supervision. This is a requirement by the BACB. You may be working at the organization and have signed an employee agreement, but this is another contract that should be signed as well. The contract should outline what you and the supervisor agree on. It can be something as follows, to work together to achieve supervisees demonstration of the competencies outlined in the, B the BACB task list and outlined in the code of ethics, to work together to facilitate in-depth reflection affecting practice, personally and professionally developing a high level of clinical expertise in accordance to the BACB guidelines for responsible conduct for behavior analysts and the BACB disciplinary and ethical standards, to meet at least every two weeks in person or via Skype, to have at least one meeting and one observation, to have no more than 50% of supervisions in a group setting, to protect the time and space for clinical supervision by keeping to agreed appointments and time allotted, any party requiring a change in the schedule will notify the other party at the earliest possible time. Cancellation with the supervisor requires a minimum of 24 hours notice without charge. This is if you're not an employee. But be sure to speak to your supervisor about whether you are being billed or not. Be sure you ask how much the hourly rate is. Often, if you're a staff member, you're not going to be charged as it's a part of their job within the organization, but again, do clarify this with them. To keep record of all meeting times and notes during meetings and observations. To work respectfully with each other, being open and willing to provide and receive feedback during supervision sessions. To document all experience um, supervision hours in accordance with the BACB requirements. 
The supervisee agrees to be prepared for sessions, having read literature, completed assignments. This again is based on the supervisor and what they require from you. To be ready to read articles or get involved in activities to help further your knowledge. Be willing to learn and uh, open to receiving support. Keep track of all hours and notes for meetings. Assist in conducting assessments related to behavioral interventions um, under the supervision of the supervisor. So you might be doing things like preference assessments and functional assessments alongside your supervisor. Implement and systematically monitor skill acquisition behavior reduction programs alongside your supervisor and report any concerns immediately to the supervisor. Communicate effectively with the supervisor and team. The supervisor agrees to provide a rationale and instructions for performing competencies, provide a model and opportunity for the supervisee to practice, provide feedback on performance to ensure competency, oversee supervisee's implementation of behavior analytic programs, train supervisee um, on behavior programs and protocols, be available for supervision and observations, to support supervisees in their ABA practice, document all supervision sessions, enhance supervisees knowledge in ABA and ethics. The contract may have a termination clause. When does supervision end? If the contract doesn't, you may want to ask the supervisor when supervision could end. Here are some possible conditions, but not limited to these conditions. The supervisee fails to fulfill their duties, is not making appropriate progress, attending meetings or completing assignments, unethical or illegal behavior on the part of the supervisee which is not resolved with the supervisor. The supervisor is no longer willing or able to continue supervising the supervisee. The supervisor will provide a one month period to give the supervisee time to find another supervisor. This is important because you may not be able to find a supervisor right away. You may need some time to hire someone or find another supervisor within the organization. So check for that in your contract or ask your supervisor. Your supervisor should never leave you suddenly like that as it wouldn't be ethical on their part. But it's always important and it's good to have it in writing as well so that you can cover your tracks. In the contract, there may be a compensation section. If you're hiring a supervisor, this is a good one to check. If you're an employee, you may not be paying the supervisor. So for example, the contract may say something like the supervisee agrees to pay $100 per hour. Charges are determined by calculating the required 5% of the total number of hours conducting uh, behavioral services for the month. For example, if you work 100 hours a month uh, doing ABA services, you must meet with your supervisor at least five hours a month. Additional hours may be requested if you feel more uh, support is needed. If the session is shared by another supervisee, the contract may say something like you will pay $50 instead of the $100. Um, but you must agree on this before the supervision uh, time. So make sure that you and your supervisor are going through the contract like that. Um, the hourly rate may vary from supervisor to supervisor. Um, if it's a larger group, the rate may be a lot lower. So again, check in for that. You may also be billed for the competency assessment. So find out how much that will cost as well. How long is the session? Um, and what will happen if you fail it? Do you have to pay for it additionally? So those are questions to ask. The contract should lay out where meetings will be held. You need 5%, you need to be observed. Um, so will that be uh, on site at your location or will it be video footage? Um, what happens if a session is canceled? How will you guys reschedule it? Having a set day a week is probably better for you guys so that you guys are uh, consistent with those meetings and observations. You want to take supervisions seriously. Don't be late for supervisions. Uh, if you're going to be late, communicate with your supervisor. You can call them or send them an email immediately letting them know um, that you're going to be late. If you miss a session or are late, your supervisor may charge you for that time. So again, ask them those questions if you are being charged for that. 
you and your supervisor will need to determine a location of meetings and observations. This could be online or it could be a Google chat, Skype, or um, on-site at the client's home, school, or at the center. In the contract, there may be a statement about how long the supervision contract is valid for. I think it's important that you and your supervisor establish how long is needed uh, if one of you and the supervision agreement. So one month may be sufficient, but again, speak to your supervisor about this if it's not in the contract. RBTs uh, that are not practicing and need to be inactive, for example, someone who is on a leave of absence, on maternity leave, or not employed still need to do annual renewals and competency assessments, but do not need monthly supervisions. Anytime that you encounter something that you are unsure about, speak to the BACB email or call them to clarify. It's better to know the right thing uh, to do than to assume something that could be incorrect. As I mentioned before, any of the behavior analyst credentials uh, can supervise you. I will often say a BCBA, but I'm referring to any of these credentials. Sometimes you can have a licensed behavioral health professional oversee you. Again, you need to ensure that they are approved by the board before you move forward. Supervisors are required to have completed an eight-hour training program to be able to supervise others. Again, important to know because if you, are, uh, if you have a supervisor and they're um, taking you on, you want to make sure that they are the right supervisor for you. Your supervisor cannot be related to you. You cannot be superior to them or be their employer. Again, you may be paying a, your supervisor to oversee you, but this is not considered as you being their boss or superior to them. You are paying them for a service. I can't stress enough the importance of documentation. You and your supervisor will be meeting and talking, things that will be said, um, so be sure to write it down. Write down when you meet, how long you met, uh, what was discussed. Um, there's, a, there's a sheet here that I have for you. It's a sample, you can use that. We use it at our center. I know for myself as a supervisor, I will say something and forget. I always joke with the girls and tell them that I'm like Dory from Finding Nemo. I suffer from short-term memory loss. So let's write it down and keep all your documents for at least seven years um, or what's mandated by the country or state or province that you're in. As the RB team, you will be implementing programs and protocols. Uh, supervision is the key to ensuring accuracy, consistency, and quality amongst the team. The supervision is to improve and maintain the professional and ethical practices of the RBT and to provide the highest quality of behavior analytic services to your client. You will be taking data, entering the data, graphing it, conducting preference assessments, collecting ABC data. Like I said, you are the heart and soul of the treatment program. You are putting the writing into action. You'll be teaching using discrete trial teaching procedures, naturalistic teaching. You will use chaining and shaping, discrimination training, and so on. This is why the competency assessment has all these items listed on it. There are things you will be responsible for doing in practice on a daily basis potentially. As an RBT, you will also need to use antecedent interventions, differential reinforcement, extinction. These are all of the topics that we'll be discussing in the 40 hours of training, so don't panic. As an RBT, you will write session notes based on the day and describe things in observable and measurable terms. You will need to have a good understanding and ensure to implement ways of maintaining your client's dignity. Again, we will be talking about this as we go through the coursework. You will be responsible for understanding and keeping professional boundaries. Is it okay to go out with your client for coffee? What about adding a supervisor on Facebook? You need to ensure you understand the supervision requirements and knowing when to seek clinical direction. There will be times when something happens and you need to approach your supervisor. This could be an issue with a client or maybe a staff member. It could be a personal issue that is impacting your quality of work. Okay, one more active listening word. 
This one is a secret word. The word is passionate. Taking the RBT course, working with your clients, learning, being dedicated is a truly passionate person. So pat yourself on the back and be proud of yourself. Again, the word is passionate. Okay, let's do the quiz. Which credential offered by the BACB must have a minimum of a bachelor's degree and must be supervised at least 5% of the time? A, BCBA, B, RBT, C, BCABA, or D, BCBAD? And the correct response is C, BCABA. Which credential offered by the BACB must have a minimum of a high school diploma and must be supervised at least 5% of the time? A, BCBA, B, RBT, C, BCABA, or D, BCBAD? And the correct response is B, RBT. An RBT can do which of the following? A, implement programs. B, conduct functional assessments. C, conduct preference assessments. D, both A and C. E, both B and C. Or F, none of the above. And the correct response is D. Both A and C are correct. Remember, you can assist with functional assessments, but you cannot conduct them independently. An RBT is A. A professional that can work independently. B. A paraprofessional that can work independently. C. A professional that cannot work independently. Or D a paraprofessional that cannot work independently. And the correct response is D, a paraprofessional that cannot work independently. How much supervision must an RBT obtain monthly? A, 8%, B, 5%, C, 2%, or D, 10%? And the correct response is B, 5%. Good job. What are some supervision activities? A, review written material. B, oversight and evaluation. C, modeling technical, professional, and ethical behavior, or D, all of the above. And the correct response is all of the above. Michelle is an RBT. Her supervisor took a look at her data sheets. Is this a valid supervisor activity? A, yes, or B, no. And the correct response is A, yes. Jackson is an RBT. His supervisor, Sarah, told him that supervisions would only be meetings since she is very busy. Is this a valid supervision structure? A, yes. Or B, no. And the correct response is B, no. Billy is an RBT. His supervisor, Tom, told him that supervisions would be more than 5% since he is a new RBT and would like to ensure he is doing a good job. 
Is this a valid amount of supervision? A. Yes. Or B. No. And the correct response is A. Yes. Remember, the minimum is 5%. You have been in RBT for five years and feel you no longer need a supervisor. It's costing you too much a month. Is this permissible according to the BACB supervision requirements? A, yes. B, no. And the correct response is B, no. You are an RBT and your supervisor has given you notice that they will no longer be your supervisor. You have contacted other BCBAs in your area and no one is able to oversee you. Are you able to continue practicing until you find a supervisor? A. Yes. B. No. And the correct response is B, no. You found a supervisor, but they have not completed their eight hour supervision course. Can they be your supervisor? A, yes, or B, no. And the correct response is B, no. Your aunt owns an autism center and she has hired you on. You have completed the RBT training and want her to do your competency assessment. Is this okay? A, yes. B, no. And the correct response is B, no. A supervisor must not be A, related to you, B, your employer, C, your direct supervisor, D, none of the above. And the correct response is A, related to you. You are a teacher in a mainstream classroom teaching math but work at a center on Saturdays for five hours. Your total hours working in behavior analytic services is 20 hours. How much supervision should you be receiving per month? A, five hours. B, three hours. C, one hour. Or D, two hours. And the correct response is C, one hour. Your supervisor has created a performance checklist to support you in your practice, making clear what your expectations are. Is this a valid supervision activity? A, yes. B, no. And the correct response is A, yes. Way to go. Your role as a healthcare professional and educator is to give our clients the best education and intervention possible. Every moment that we spend with our clients should always be a learning opportunity. Being mindful of what you are doing and saying is quite important. Our clients deserve quality and effective treatment. Find ways to evaluate yourself. Have you, been, have you been seeing improvements within yourself? What are some things you can do to improve your skills? Reach out to your supervisor. Give your supervisor ideas on meeting topics or things you want to learn or improve on. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to our next class. Take care and see you next time.